So when we see that we have hyperbilirubinemia, the next question you have to ask is kind of some, similar to when we talked about azotemia, except now we're talking liver. So you ask yourself, prehepatic, hepatic, or post-hepatic, which of the following, or are there multiple causes of hyperbilirubinemia in the patient? So let's talk about what each of these entail and how you actually differentiate them. So this is just a kind of review from the first part of the class. So prehepatic, one of the causes is going to be hemolysis red cell destruction. And of course, this can be extravascular hemolysis only, or we can see it with intravascular hemolysis. Because in either case, the product is still an excess amount of bilirubin that has to be produced from all that red cell breakdown. So in prehepatic hyperbilirubinemia due to hemolysis, you have an excess destruction of red cells either in macrophages or you can have cells being lysed in circulation. You get that excess production of bilirubin. And so now the bilirubin is in the blood. And of course, that's our unconjugated bilirubin or indirect bilirubin. It has to get taken up by the liver. And so we see first an increase in unconjugated bilirubin. And again, I'm not going to hold you responsible necessarily for which one increases first because it depends on when you actually see it. It gets taken up by the liver, and then, of course, it is conjugated. And, of course, it's going to come in over here. It's going to be conjugated by hepatocytes, so it'll actually be in the hepatocytes. It gets conjugated, and now it's conjugated bilirubin. And then it needs to get excreted into the, into the biliary tree, into those bile canaliculi. But remember, that was the rate-limiting step. So first you have an increase here because there's so much red cell production. And now you get an increase in conjugated bilirubin because this gets overwhelmed and it spills out into the sinusoids, which have red cells. And it goes flows down to the central vein and goes into circulation. So you can then see kind of this increase in conjugated bilirubin. This is water-soluble, and so it is then, it actually winds up going into the kidney where you then see an increase in bilirubin in the urine. And of course, it's going to turn your urine orange because it's bilirubin. And so remember that dogs have a low renal threshold for bilirubin. So you can certainly get an increase in bilirubin from that low renal threshold, so in really concentrated samples. But this is an animal who's going to have hyperbilirubinemia as well as bilirubinuria, and that's what's abnormal. You can also see when the bilirubin gets high enough, their serum will become icteric, kind of a yellow-orange. It's really more yellow than that. So icterus is that hyperbilirubinemia. So that's prehepatic from hemolysis. So another type of prehepatic is something that we see only in horses. So in horses with anorexia, so right, so you offer a horse food, He's unwilling to eat the food for whatever reason. Maybe he has a tooth root abscess. Maybe he is sick. Who knows? But he's not eating. And so we see then an increase in unconjugated bilirubin. And that's because the bilirubin can't get into the actual liver. And that's because of an increase in free fatty acids competes with that's supposed to be FFA, there we go. It competes with the bilirubin getting into the liver, so the free fatty acids win and the bilirubin can't get in. That's one mechanism. And the other is that you have decrease in conjugation. So we don't see as much conjugation to bilirubin from unconjugated bilirubin. Um, and that's because horses conjugate their bilirubin a little bit different. So in horses, we only see an increase in bili that is unconjugated or this is again indirect bili, because we measure it indirectly, and it's usually going to be less than 10 milligrams per deciliter, this increase. You don't expect to see increases in any of the induced enzymes, so we're going to expect that GGT is normal, because it has nothing to do with cholestasis, and that was true in the hemolysis cause as well. There's no change in GGT.
of course, I forgot to mention something um, because since we've done it before, it's the same in, in terms of recognizing prehepatic hyperbilirubinemia. What you're trying to do is recognize hemolytic anemia. So that's kind of how you're going to remember how, or that's how you're going to decide it's prehepatic, is you're going to identify hemolytic anemia. So regenerative anemia in everyone but the horse, and then a cause for the actual hemolytic anemia, red cell parasite, immune destruction, oxidative injury, etc.